Weather Warriors, hope you're having a great day here. We got another potential major winter storm brewing out here in Texas and New Mexico. This is the first system that delivered several inches of snow and ice that is exiting the coast. And a couple of these maps, I could just not believe what it was putting down for ice. And I'll go over that in a second. And I'm also going to talk about track timing, location, and much more in your forecast update for today. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below. If you like detailed educational weather forecast breakdowns, just like this, and hit those bell notifications because this is time sensitive information. It is best when you view these forecasts right as they come out. So let's get right into it. Here's our current watches and warnings, warnings all over Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana. We got winter weather advisories in the, the purplish areas. And then winter storm watches out here. Now, I actually wouldn't be surprised to see some ice storm activity out there. Maybe an ice storm warning later on. It's still a little bit far out, but we're going to talk about that potential as well. Temperatures right now are just ridiculous across parts of Texas. Well, these are actually the forecasted temperatures for Wednesday morning. Look at that single digits in the Texas panhandle. Brr, it's cold out there. Six degrees, five degrees. And then you got 20s all the way down to almost the Gulf of Mexico. So pretty freaking cold, if you ask me. Now, all right, now let's jump right into the storm system here. We're looking at the future reflectivity, future radar, essentially. This is Wednesday morning at around 1 a.m. And you can see a nice moderate band of snow blowing up over Oklahoma, parts of uh, Arkansas, down into even Texas, a little tail right there. And that tail could have mixed precipitation, a little bit of freezing rain, sleet, and snow. But watch as we head towards the day on Wednesday here at 1 p.m. I'll move this uh, out of the way here, but you can see here's your low pressure system. This is starting to build. I'm forecasting this to really strengthen once it gets east of Oklahoma into the uh, Arkansas, Louisiana area. Right when this gulf hits the shore, that's really when it's going to strengthen. And you can see just east of Texas there, a nice band of rain. Here's your temperature gradient, your fronts, these dashed lines. You can see they're tightly packed together. That's creating a temperature gradient. Warm south winds overriding cold Arctic air at the surface. That is going to create freezing rain and a lot of it potentially for Louisiana and uh, southern Arkansas. To the north of that, when you get into the deeper air mass, a nice moderate band of snow up there. So some pretty uh, wintry weather here on Wednesday. Look at the moisture supply. This is the mid-level moisture, a nice batch of moisture coming straight out of the Gulf of Mexico. And now, as we're looking at Thursday morning here, you can see this really starts to get cranking. A nice batch of moisture coming from the south, slamming into Tennessee and parts of North Carolina. And you can see this is the 540 line. This is kind of where the rain to snow line is. And you can really south of that, uh, that would indicate a much wetter snow. This blue area right here is moderate to heavy snow, but it's probably a slushy snow. Uh, your powdery snow is going to be to the north and your powdery snow accumulates a little bit more. So while it's a little bit lighter in uh, Illinois, uh, Missouri, parts of Arkansas, uh, Indiana, and Ohio, it's going to accumulate a little bit better because it's fluffier. But to the south of that, it's going to be a heavy wet snow that, you know, doesn't accumulate, but it's heavy. So it could stack up anyway. You can see a little bit of freezing rain and sleet uh, developing south of that uh, snow line as well. And uh, that is a significant concern for parts of uh, Tennessee and uh, parts of North Carolina and Virginia. We'll go over that in a second. Uh, but uh, here is some heavy rain and potentially thunderstorms. And where that transitions to rain and snow, we could have some thunder sleet and thunder snow. We'll have to watch that closely here. You can see the mid-level lift really strong. And this is kind of where that sleet and snow was. Really significant lift. That is definitely a thunder snow type of look there really high level lift in the mid levels that's 700 millibars that means there's movement going up very quickly higher and higher and that is indicative of potentially some thunderstorms here's the uh r gem this is or the uh, nam for uh 12z on thursday which is about 6 a.m and you'll see this purple area very heavy sleet over north carolina and virginia now the r gem this is going to be a really tricky forecast. The yard gym is actually forecasting heavy freezing rain in this area for this time. If you're going to choose between freezing rain and sleet, you'd probably want sleet because the freezing rain 
that would stack up and cause a major ice storm for North Carolina and Virginia. And uh, that potential is certainly there. You can see even some ice mixing into this. Rain to the south and very heavy snow up into you know New Jersey, up into Pennsylvania, and, and then some light to moderate snow in Ohio, New York, uh, parts of southern Michigan, and parts of uh, Illinois. So the heaviest activity is going to be right where that rain to snow line and sleet is. That's where the best lift is in the atmosphere. This is the thing we want to watch in terms of ice. This is the 700 millibar warm air advection. And kind of where you see that, that's indicative of warm air getting transported. And you can see it's located right over uh, north, or probably Virginia to West Virginia there. This is the uh, frontogenesis. This is kind of like your fronts forming, essentially a warm front. And that's typically where you get your ice is along warm fronts. And you can see it's very significant within that region. So it's something we have to watch. This is the 850 millibar frontogenesis. The 850 is a little bit lower in the atmosphere, but you can see that's just a little bit farther to the south. So that's also an indicator somewhere kind of within the uh, Virginia and North Carolina region is under the gun for some ice. Uh, if you look at the R gem for this time, this is what I'm talking about. So this is the Canadian for the same time, Thursday morning around 6 a.m. It's got sleet, except it's a little bit farther south and it's got way more freezing rain. And that is heavy freezing rain, guys. That's like, you know, 0.2 inches almost within that three hour time period. And it sits there for a few hours. And so it could stack up quite a bit. So we'll have to watch that. To the north, you can see a moderate band of snow. So that's a little bit of uncertainty with uh, the precip mode there. The uh, Argem tends to overestimate the freezing rain, I've noticed. Uh, so if I were to bet, it would be more of a sleet event with still some significant freezing rain. This is 850. This is the temperatures just off the surface, a little bit higher in the atmosphere. And you can see they're farther north. Now watch what happens as we get towards the surface. The, eight, the surface temperatures are below freezing. So it's actually warmer just off the surface, and it's freezing at the surface. That's the perfect environment for sleet and freezing rain. You'll notice the R gem. Now look at this. Uh, this is the R gem right here, and this is the NAM. You can see the NAM is just a little bit warmer for South Carolina or North Carolina. So there's a little bit of inconsistency for that region at the moment. Now, if we go towards the lift here, look at the lift at this time. This is uh, around uh, one a or six a.m. on Thursday. Significant lifts. There could be some thunder sleet and thunder freezing rain during this time period. So we're going to fast forward this now. That We're looking at uh, Thursday at 7 p.m. The storm could recycle just a little bit. There's some issues with dry air that get kicked in towards this time, and that could really shut off the snow potential for parts of uh, uh, Pennsylvania and maybe even New Jersey. But there still is a little bit of leftover moisture that would wrap around into the Midwest and interior Northeast, delivering light to moderate snow as we head towards Thursday night into Friday morning. But there is, uh, you can see that dry air right there. This is the 700 millibars. There's a dry patch of moisture, but it does kind of fill in again a little bit to the Southwest. So we could see some redevelopment. You can see as we head towards Friday morning at uh, around 1 a.m., it you do get a, a little bit of a second surge of moisture and uh, decent, you know, advection and uh, some moderate to potentially heavy snow along the coastline of the northeastern United States. And then to the north of that, that's mostly just light leftover bonus type of snow, uh, just a couple few inches with that type of stuff. And then uh, as we head towards uh, Friday at 7 p.m., this moves to the north, that dry air kicks in again. But on the backside, you could get a little bit of wraparound, but that dry air is really strong. But we could see a couple of inches on the backside on top of the snow earlier on. You can see that dry air really kick in, the mid-level moisture. The snow ratios during this time, 15 to 1. So for every 0.1 inch of liquid, you could get 1.5 inches of snow or so. To the south of that, it's more like 8 to 10 to 1, which we'll go over here in a second. Temperatures, burr, 20s, but not terribly cold, not as cold as it will be in the Midwest. Now here's the snowfall amounts. This is the NAM computer model and you can see we're talking several inches of snow in some areas this is the Kuchera ratio generally speaking in the northeastern United States somewhere between five and ten inches the axis of heaviest snow is right now through Pennsylvania 
to the coast. I do believe that the southern extent of this is a little bit overdone. The models will typically overdo uh, the snowfall amounts when there's sleet mixing in, especially in the southern end, like this area right here. So that could be overdone a little bit, but there's definitely some potential for the northeast, some areas to get six to 10 out of this thing, and a couple inches higher than that in some areas. So that's the NAM computer model. In terms of ice, this is the ice that the NAM is laying out. And you can see, look at that, 0.5 inches in some of those areas. So that's significant. Really anything over 0.25 is uh, pretty significant here. So we could have uh, 0.25 to 0.5 inches in parts of uh, West Virginia through uh, Pennsylvania. And then you'll see uh, another batch over here towards Maine, another 0.25. This is something we'll have to watch. Usually the ice... Ice is the biggest threat as the storm is developing. And there is some indication we could get some redevelopment out here, like I was talking about earlier, another surge of moisture and advection. And that could uh, throw a little bit of ice out in uh, the main area. So we'll have to watch that closely. As you go towards the farther south here, you can see some areas even hitting 0.75, maybe an inch of ice. And this is using the NAM computer model. This is North Carolina. Virginia, parts of West Virginia. So pretty crazy amounts there with the uh, NAM computer model. And then we'll look at the uh, RGEM and the RGEM is just absolutely wild. I couldn't even believe what I was seeing here. Point uh, 1.75 to two inches of ice. That would be a major ice storm. Now at the moment, I think uh, with my experience here with using the RGEM and the Canadian, it usually overdoes amounts in terms of ice. It overamplifies the ice amounts. So in terms of the amounts, I would say the uh, NAM is probably closer, but we'll have to watch this area out in North Carolina and uh, Virginia. I do think that's overdone at the moment. Probably the max area will be somewhere around 0.75 inches, uh, but uh, that is absolutely wild there. So if you look at the uh, NAM now, this is going to be farther south again, and you can see that axis of heaviest snow runs down into West Tennessee, into Arkansas, Central Arkansas, into Northeast Texas. Again, that southern extent where you see this kind of blotchy pattern, that's likely overdone. Unless the entire track shifts to the south at the moment, that's a little bit overdone with those six inches of mounts. I think there's going to be more freezing rain and sleet mixing in. Uh, but generally speaking, some areas receiving five to eight inches in that in that zone. You can see the uh, RDPS is actually not quite as strong with the snowfall amounts, but still has that access. It kind of diminishes it for uh, parts of Tennessee, but then redevelops it out in Arkansas and Oklahoma. Again, generally five to eight inches in the max areas in the Tennessee, two to four. To the north, the, the north uh, is not going to get as much lift, but they will get prolonged snowfall, but it'll be a very light snow, so like one to four inches in most of those areas. If you look at the ice again, this is as the storm develops, it has a couple of waves. It develops here as well, and uh, you can see Louisiana, parts of Texas, out into Arkansas and Mississippi, a good batch of ice, 0 0.25 to as much as maybe 0 0.75 inches. And you can see this NAM computer model has almost an inch in that area of northeast uh, Louisiana. So again, potentially significant ice fall amounts. But like I said, probably 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 inches in the max areas. And then you can see the RGEM again, usually overdoes it, but it has almost two inches of ice in uh, Louisiana. That's absolutely wild. Goes all the way down almost to Houston, down into southwest Texas. But again, I believe, you know, the Europe, the Canadian overdoes amounts just a little bit. And then you look at the snowfall amounts, and uh, it's a little bit farther north from that freezing rain, but Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, or not Louisiana, Arkansas, and Missouri, as much as three to six inches, some areas maybe even seven, eight inches in Oklahoma as this thing is really developing. And the uh, NAM computer model, very similar story. Pretty much the same, just a little bit more in some areas. But generally speaking, four to eight inches in the max areas in those purples. So pretty crazy event we got in store. Again, the ice is a really good concern, a big concern for Texas, Louisiana, parts of Arkansas, and then also West Virginia, Virginia, and North Carolina as well. So stay tuned, guys. I'll have more updates. Subscribe if you like videos like this. Comment below. And 
Share this with a friend and we'll see you soon.